This conference will now be recorded. Okay, good morning, everyone. Today is already February, February 2nd. Hard to believe. Wow. Uh, already done with one month of 2022. I mean, the years are just flying by uh, really quick. Um, today, I'm really pleased to have Kim Peterson, the first American home warranty present, to talk about uh, for continuing education, the home warranty claims process, and kind of what Ben Premier has done over the year, and also just general information about home warranties and how um, they work. Um, just to give you guys a side note as well, whenever I fill out our applications for errors and omissions, I do that once a year when I go out to bid for a uh, policy to find out um, what our premiums are going to be. One of the things I always ask about is how many of your deals involve a home warranty? Because the more deals we have that have a home warranty in place, the better our rate is. Uh, just simply because home warranties are there whenever there's an issue uh, to help protect us, protect clients, protect everybody against uh, uh, unexpected claims uh, as far as it goes for errors and omissions. Um, having that added security, uh, I, the insurance companies have recognized having home warranties in place uh, means that they have to pay out less with errors and emissions. So that's a thing to think about. I know some of our brokers also make this a standard closing gift for clients, which is a really wonderful, generous closing gift uh, to provide to a client, um, their buyers when they close on a property. Here's a home warranty. Uh, this is my mm -hmm. gift to you and your uh, your fixtures, your uh, your appliances, things like that are going to be warranted, things that are not protected normally through insurance claims. So anyway, with that in mind, I'm going to turn everything over to Kim Peterson. You should be, you're should you seeing her screen right now as she uh, takes us through the home warranty claims process. Kim, thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Again, I'm Kim Peterson with First American Home Warranty. And um, I, I had reached out to uh, Lene and asked, uh, sent her your guys' for, for uh, your office, your total claims for the uh, for all of 2021. And um, anyway, I'll share that information at the end of the class, just because I think it's really nice to kind of see, um, because I think there's a lot of claims that uh, we don't hear about that just get done and paid and ran smooth. And then when the agents get involved or and I get involved on a claim, it's because a claim has hit a bump in the road. <laughs> and so that's the ones that as agents that you hear about and I hear about, but there's so many other ones that that we don't hear about and you know proof is in the pudding. So um anyway I'll share that information. So uh I like to do my CE class that I have some slides here I'll go over. I'm not gonna go over every single one. I'll uh be um considerate of your time at the uh, end too. If, uh, I'll get my email and if you guys can email me your name and uh, the RE number or I'll get it from Lene and then I'll send you guys email over your uh, uh, certificates for this class. And then I'll, um, and then anyway, in here, I don't know if it's through uh, uh, chat or you guys can interact questions along the way if you can um some things because like i said you guys are out on in the field you are the ones who uh, you guys aren't the sales reps for home warranty but you also want to have be educated on it and have the information to provide your clients and um so ask me what you guys are asking you know what you're being asked or you just want to clarify on a few things so i kind of since we started out with the claims i thought i would start out with talking about kind of just an overall home warranty how claims are processed I'm doing it as a general as an industry um i'll use uh first american as an example on some of the things and some of the things i think that you should um be looking for when you're looking at home warranties um but anyway ask me away on anything um so let's just see and i'm you know i'm because if you many of you've been in the industry forever and you're very familiar with home warranties and maybe some are not so um sorry if this is redundant uh anyway but just like this an overall of what the home warranty is it's uh a home warranty is a residential service contract that provides repair and replacement coverage for many of your home's essential 
and I see systems and appliance that fails through normal wear and tear. So those are some of the key words I want you know to think about is that they do need to fail through normal wear and tear, and it's the systems and the appliances that are within the confines of the home. So um, uh, generally, most of their uh, home warranties they don't have; they're not a structural. There are systems and appliances in the house. Um, oops, let me see why my thing is not working. There we go. Um, with a few exceptions, such as pools, air conditioning, well pumps, pressure regulators, and septic tanks, all items must be located within the confines of the perimeter of the foundation of the primary living quarters. So, so the septic tanks, uh, uh, the pools, air conditioning, most of those are located on the outside, and generally those are added on, are able to be added on as options um, within home warranties. Um, with a home warranty, sellers and buyers and agents can all be protected against costly breakdowns before, during, and after the sale of a home, which I think is addresses what Lene said about the um, like the benefit of the uh, she's price break on the E and O, um, and it is uh, you know it is, it is a really nice peace of mind for your your sellers and buyers. Sellers during um, most home warranties has some sort of a uh, uh, seller's coverage during the listing period. Not all, and they vary. So look into that to see what is um, considered for a seller's coverage on the different home warranty plans. And then obviously it's, you know, uh, protecting for the buyer and the agents afterwards that in case something, you know, someone gets unhappy after the sale of a home and so many things can happen. Um, mechanical systems and appliances can, can and often they break down a home warranty provides budget protections against the high cost of unexpected failures. Uh, when I train my agents and talk about home warranties, that's like a key word that I love to say that I hope um, when the agents are um, educating their clients on the home warranty that to set the expectations for your clients that so when something goes awry on a home warranty or when they place a claim that the expectations across the board are already set that the key word is that it is a budget protector there is a process and it's a it's a budget protector where it's just it's coverage it's not a blanket coverage it doesn't cover every single thing just as any other warranty not cover everything so i feel like that's just if you can kind of put that in your your um verbiage when you speak to your agent or your clients that uh it is a budget protector and it it, it it has great coverage and especially on the big ticket items but it's just not a blanket will cover everything and you know the homeowner never has to worry or have any out-of-pocket expenses so i just you know those are i always just like to kind of as a reminder is when you're talking to your clients um to you know educate them in that way so when the expectations come of the home warranty um you know everybody's on the same page with that and especially when you give it as a um uh a closing gift which i have a lot of agents that do that as a closing gift um you know you build a relationship with them and you're there when they go to place a claim you're the first one that they call and so uh, you know because they don't really know what to do um you know, so just that they know kind of exactly what it is. I say when you have other home warranties, most every home warranty company has a rep um, like myself. Uh, I always say when your clients, call, you know, call you when uh, with a claim, call refer them over right away to me and I'll walk them through the process. I'll educate them before, after, during the transaction. So um, anyway, there's something on that. And then why offer home warranty coverage? Home buyers have become accustomed to receiving some type of warranty protection during their first year of ownership. It can prevent lawsuits and protect the agent and seller and repair and replacement. Um, so most home warranties, uh, speaking on the repair and replacement is, that's it, there's the process. Um, most home warranties, they, when something has uh, broke down or failed of normal wear and tear, then the process is, most home warranties will go out and try and figure out what's going on and then try and repair it first. And if they can't repair it, then they will replace uh, the set item. So that's kind of that. Good. 
um, the basics of a home warranty. To obtain coverage for a covered item that fails, a claim must be placed. In most cases, a home warranty will not provide reimbursement for service provided um, without prior pr approval. So there's another thing that just almost all home warranties are the same in that way. They, you need to, when something breaks down, they need to place the claim with the home warranty. Now, some home warranty companies, you have they have their own technicians that come out and they're uh, uh, contracted with that has to service it. Some home warranties, you can choose your own, but even with those, you still are gonna have to place the, home, uh, the claim with the home warranty. And there's an expectation that if that can be set at the beginning, it makes the whole claim process run a lot smoother too, because most home warranties, <clears throat> if they just, go in and um, hire their own technician because you know the water heater's leaking or something and have them come out um, most home warranties will not reimburse for that even though you know the, you know they and sometimes like I said sometimes they forget like they so much stuff happens through a transaction and and they're like they did forgot that they got a home warranty was part of it or you know when something breaks down that's not the first thing that they think of um, Anyway, but that's but you know they to to be paid for the repair and that's the whole purpose of the home warranty, especially that first year. Um, they need to place a claim with the home warranty company, and then the home warranty instead part of the process. They'll go out there, they'll determine what's what's broke down, and then if it needs to be repaired or replaced. Um, and then only the items specifically mentioned in the contract as covered are are covered. So that's another thing that. Um, Part of the education with the uh, your client is most of all the home warranties, they have brochures. The brochures do a breakdown of what's covered and what's not covered. Most of the plans are shown in the, the brochures and it'll show um, like what's covered in each plan. So it's just, you know, the homeowner uh, needs to know what plan they have and then they can you know with the brochure um, know what's covered in that and then also most most of the brochures of the different home warranty companies will have like the limits of liability in there i know uh, for first american example that like, we have the uh, limits of liability in there and it's it, everything is really broke down so i always say hopefully you know they look over the home warranty brochure and they read it so they know what is what is and what is not covered on a home warranty. And then some home warranties uh, provide coverage only if the items that malfunction are reported during the contract term. So it has to be um, most of the home warranties, they're a 12 month uh, plan and most of them, you know, they start sometime from the time of close. Maybe there might be a waiting period for some home warranties and then it goes out for the 12 months. Um, but it needs to be reported during the, the contract, even if, you know, it expires on, you know, the last day of the 12th month and then the next day the water heater breaks or something, it's, you know, no longer covered, obviously. And then, um, and then just something, these are some little key points on, um, uh, home warranties. They don't cover for noise, like, you know, if the, uh, heater is a really older heater and it's you know annoying because it makes a lot of noise but as long as it's working and functioning properly and heating properly then those are things that are not covered under home warranties and i do get calls on that so that's just nice to kind of um be out there um do you have any questions or anything for anything right now so all right yeah i do um oh, yeah, so go ahead. You just had three photos. One showed tree roots and a pipe and a and the oven door open and a dog licking the dishwasher. Can you explain what that, that all means? So so some samples of those is like the, it's the normal wear and tear. So like say a dishwasher malfunctions, um, the mechanical part of it, that's what we're gonna repair, right? The first or the um homework is gonna repair. But if uh using like that we just I just had this claim someone call and ask on this um the kid was standing on the the uh, door of the dishwasher and it ended up breaking okay and then they try to file a claim on that well that's not covered that's not a normal wear and tear so so if or the dog's eating the <laughs> eating the you know um uh cover on where the dispenser comes out for the the um the laundry soap there that's not covered so it has to be normal wear and tear that has happened on the dishwasher um and then the roots 
most home warranties, if in the, they have, they cover plumbing, but in the plumbing, like uh, First American will cover if there's like a, a stop, stoppage, right? There's stoppage because of, from the sewage, that kind of stuff, that, that plumbing will be, um, it, it will be covered from there. If there is stoppage in the plumbing flow due to roots, or um, uh, rodent infestation which happens sometimes, that's not considered normal wear and tear and that's generally something that's not covered by most home warranty companies. So they're kind of using that as an example of that. Now there are some, I, for example, First American, I know that they do have a few options that have now been added on that will cover roots, um, tree roots. So just, you know, home warranty, they do change. So just know, and if you're ever in questions, uh, if something is get covered, you know, contact the, your, um, your rep and then they'll know. And I want to see the oven there. I honestly don't know what that photo is. <laughs> photo is on that one. Looks like the the um, the tray or the door for the oven door. So looks yeah. like we have have another question here. Um, I don't know who caller number four is, but caller number four, you unmuted your mic. Oh, maybe not. Okay, sorry about that, Kim. That's all right. It's all right. Oh. Tina has a question. I have a, oh, I have a hi. question. Hi, Kim. This is Tina Roberts. Yes, hey, I, I know in the past when I've used First American, I know we had an issue with service providers, uh -huh. you, you know, your providers coming from the valley. We might have ordered a part for, for instance, it was for an oven, but then it took several weeks until that provider was coming back to Central Oregon to fix the oven. So my client was out of the oven for several weeks. So are you now using local providers or where are they coming from? Well, they, they're they coming from all over. They In the Deschutes County, we do have providers, local providers there. And it just, it's, it's, we've been adding providers. We're constantly, I just got an email that they, we've hired on some new contractors as well. So, you know, this last year, I'm being honest, it's been a challenge with, uh, trades and technicians and having enough that our people are working. That's um, so that has been challenged. But I know our department is always hiring uh, new contractors, and and uh, there shouldn't be a delay in the right scenario. There should not be a delay whether where are the contractors coming. It's, we have a contractor coming that's maybe not right in band, but I we have we definitely have all the contractors in band that unless there was somebody that was outside it sometimes it can be because of maybe the specific um type of appliance you know the brand that maybe someone locals can't do that they had to contract with somebody else or just a lack of at the moment and so it was the person that could come out there the soonest but generally if we don't have somebody that can come out within our guidelines now i said i'm being honest our this it was this has been the most challenging year with um just being and i'll share that at the end of just the perfect storm of so I mean our claims went up and having enough technicians and um, and all of that that um, that um, uh, but now that when we don't have that then we then an uh, offer is the outside service um, that they, you can hire a, uh, another technician that's local so that has okay. to get optimized through claims but there are some options that we have available and when when there's big delays of any claims um that's where you know contact your rep of whoever you're working with and so that they you know there can be some help on some some help to get speed up processes okay thank you very much appreciate it yeah you bet so on um, that uh, on that note, excuse me, if you have a, a septic or sewer stoppage and you have toilets not working and you need them fixed within a day or two, can you call your own plumber that you have a relationship with who will come out sooner than somebody else that's never heard of you before? Yeah, it has to. I don't have, I mean, like as a rep, I don't have the authority to do that, but the claims does. And that is an option that happens as they can get, they kind of have guidelines. Most homeowners will have a guidelines of like a time frame that here, you know, we have to do a process that can be used with our own technician. But if that's not met and we can't, then yes, they can offer that. 
I always, if things are really delayed with that, that's the first thing I ask is, can we get that? And sometimes it takes some pushing to get through, but it does. And sometimes, sometimes they're like, no, we're right on schedule and are, you know, the, that it doesn't so it just depends and it is on a case by case but that is an option yes that does happen and when when needed are you there okay good um let's see so go on um let's see the home warranty does not provide coverage for all co costs associated with repair or replacement some examples of costs typically not covered by home warranty includes costs to modify existing equipment to fit properly with new equipment costs to bring items up to current code requirements routine uh, rut rut routine maintenance cost disposals of existing equipments and in some cases but obtaining a permit some home warranty companies may offer additional coverage options that may provide protections for these additional costs. So that's another thing that's just kind of the expectations that's um, helpful if the clients are educated on that, that um, most home warranty companies will, if there are, you know, going to replace or repair something, it's the, their cost is going to be the main mechanical part of the system. Uh, but there's always going to be some, not always, but there is going to be some out of um, pocket expense for um, for the homeowner. So, and there, again, if you're replacing a heating system there's you know eight thousand dollars for a new heating system that say the home warranty company is going to cover if they need to do that but there's going to be if their new system comes in there's going to be some sort of modifications that generally happen and we're talking a couple hundred dollars that or you know well under i haven't really seen any most of them are always like under a thousand dollars so a couple hundred dollars several hundred dollars for that's that comes that the um the homeowner pays um that'll come out of their pocket and there's different a few different options on different home warranties that that will cover some of those costs they use this as an example of the uh equipment like disposal in holloway um those generally aren't in like in the their the first basic plans but in the additional plans that you build up uh, a lot of times that's a covered cost that is is in there but just know what the what the um plans are and what they cover Oops, let's see uh, basic cover items usually are the central air conditioning heating ductwork built-in microwave dishwasher electrical system and garbage disposal like i said not all parts um are covered in there the main mechanical part that makes it function is generally the main thing that's covered and then there's some additional parts that um are added that can be covered for with different options or aren't covered. Oops, I don't know why that's doing that. Sorry about that. Um, some other ones choose the oven range, cooktop, plumbing system, plumbing stoppages, sump pumps, toilet tanks, bowls, and water heater. Those, and you know, the, the big ones, the big items generally like obviously are the heating system and the water heaters, and then um, um, refrigerator, washer, dryers. Those are generally in the um, the higher plans, but there are covered items that are in there. And um, then some other options too, um, since we're talking about this right now is um, options are, like I said, septic, well pumps, um, pools are all different options that can be added on to home warranties that are necessarily system or appliances. So, okay, I just listed those right there. Like I said, most of it, some, it, it there are some home warranties that might have some leak uh, or some roof coverage, um, really verifying what that is. Um, but most of it's like I said, the systems and the appliances in there in the home. Um, just know the plans. These are some some key things is if um, covered for unknown conditions as well. So this is always a topic that's brought up of what is uh coverage for known and unknown existing problems so an example is the rust corrosion sediment mostly like it's going to happen like in a hot water heater you guys are having the inspections done 
it the water you know shows it's heating right there's no leakage in there um so everything looks good and then you know you have, might have a family of two in the home that doesn't use the hot water or the water that much and then you have a family of five or six that move in there and then all of a sudden the first month the water heater is getting used a lot and it starts leaking well when they get in there there's some rust and corrosion in there that's obviously could not been known from the outside so that's considered a pre-existing obviously that's been there for a while but generally with home warranty companies know is that something that will be covered or not covered and um um is you know if if because that's something that's unknown but something that would be known is that would not be covered is if you know through the inspection you could tell there was an active leak that had been happening and then it wasn't addressed and someone just said well we'll put a home warranty on it and then the homeowner gets in there and they're like okay i have the home warranty let's get it fixed but then we go on you know the home warranty tech goes out there and says it has been leaking for a long time and it's obvious that it's been leaking for a long time then that's considered a no and pre-existing and it will not be covered by most home warranty companies um, um, if a home warranty company offers coverage for unknown conditions, the coverage will likely apply only at the one time coverage from the time the coverage begins. The defect or malfunctions is not known or could not have been respons responsibly observed by looking at an operating system. So like I said, that's like a hot water heater. If there was like scorching on there on a hot water heater during an inspection is gonna see, an inspector's gonna see that and that's gonna be something that's gonna be addressed. That's gonna be considered a known um, existing issue. Um, okay, so it's kind of said this, kind of went over that, what, you know, just be clear on what each home warranty, whoever you're using, what the difference between the known and pre-existing and unknown pre-existings are. And if you're any questions, like I said, ask your rep and they can verify specifically on what that is. Um, not covered items, as with covered items, no single sentence can set forth what is not covered. Uh, most home warranty contracts list items covered and not covered. Like I said, you can generally find those. I know for ours, it's in uh, the brochure. There, it'll be a list of what's covered under a certain uh, appliance. And then underneath there, it'll list, it gives the examples of what's not covered. And then also in the limits of liability, I, I know they're lengthy, but in there, it'll state some things that have, you know, be clear on what's covered and not covered. Um, it is important to mention that the covered items may not be covered in full. Those are, like I said, there's always going to be some out of pocket for the homeowner. Um, and then be sure to check any dollar limitations as well. So that's another thing. Home warranty companies, I mean, industry-wide, everybody pretty much so covers the same systems and appliances. However, the difference is their limits, their dollar limits, that many, you know, um, everybody say across the board covers water heaters is the limit as if it can be repaired or replaced. Is it, it's a cap $500 or is it $200 or is it a full replacement um, or repair? Is there a cap on the repair dollar amount as well? So that really does vary. And that is something that, I, that um, you know, that does set them apart that we're, they're not all the same. And where are we at here? Let's see. So not covered, generally speaking, the home warranty will exclude coverage on items that have been improperly modified and installed. So I know some sometimes those things are you don't know until it happens, but have had a few claims that have came through in the past, like a older home or something that where somebody did the did the install or did a repair on something that was obviously not up to code was not done properly and then it wasn't um discovered until you know the new homeowners got in there and um and then it failed so just most of this you know probably some of that stuff will come up obviously in a home inspection but that does happen occasionally and so those are things that generally aren't covered if that has happened with home warranties um and then I said misuse or abuse is not considered normal wear and tear. So normal wear and tear is a, a good verbiage to have of what that means. Um, and then most home warranties, they're not, what's not covered is, 
it's like I said normal wear, wear and tear, not um, uh, mother nature cause will not uh, will not be repaired. And a good thing for especially in the Schutz County, you guys, you know, with all the snow, the uh, snow and um, um, weather that you get during the winter time, I get some calls like you guys get those. Um, are they called the ice um, tunnels or whatever on from the roof from the so much snow on the roof and then it'll cause leaking that's that's considered that's something that would not be cut so if the leaking was caused from the snow that has been packed on the roof that caused um the water uh, the pipes to burst whatever that's considered a natural um hazard that's not a normal wear and tear that would be covered by home warranty companies so like floods and you know we don't have earthquakes here but you know, you know fire floods smoke those kind of things and then another thing i like to uh point out is for with most home warranty companies that's not a covered item is the secondary damage so secondary damage would be the dishwasher is leaking and then it ruins the kitchen floors so uh, a home warranty company more will more likely repair or replace the fix the dishwasher but for the homeowner to have the help the floors repaired and fixed that would be their um homeowner's insurance so that's just something to um get to know and let's see where are we at repairs arising from manufacturing so the recall that's it generally will happen to is if it's a recall um i know it's going to be through the manufacturer um that's not going to be covered by home warranty that's going to go through oops that's going to go through uh the manufacturers uh recall or um and i said the secondary damage here effects on that let's see and then like I said, it's systems and appliances within the founder, the, the confines of the home. I say kind of like within the four walls, um, that's or what's covered in the home warranty, like sprinkler systems, lighting systems outside of the home. Those are generally not covered items by the home warranty. And sorry, I don't know why my thing keeps sticking up on. Um, so what to take in consideration if the home is on a slab or has polybutylene uh, piping there may be limitations on coverage related to these items some contracts may only provide coverage up to a certain dollar amount and some may uh, limit coverage altogether so that's just something it's very expensive to get through the uh, concrete there um, i know first american we do have some coverage on that but we have a limit on that i think most home warranty companies have a limit on that but it does have some coverage some may not have any coverage so that's just because that's an expensive cost if something needs to get drilled down into there um and then also some things to know with home warranty companies is the heating and air conditioning are generally the greatest concern obviously uh, for a new homeowner because of the large expense associated with repair or replacement if the system is not typically designed such as a heat pump a package unit or duct central air and heat you will want to check coverage you will also want to check to see if additional coverage is needed for homes with more than one unit so I, there is a lot of homes that I uh, come across now that there are, there's a double uh, air, you know, HVAC system, there's a double washer and dryer. So just know if um, that if that's covered for um, all the units are covered, if there's it needs to be an additional cost added on or option added on for the coverage. I know for First, uh, first American example, we will, we do cover it's not no additional cost if they have multiple units um air conditioning units washer dryers um there what's what's in there the one cost is covered um and then there's going to be some additional refrigeration that can be added on as options um and then uh, there's a lot of uh heat pumps just know with the different home warranties with us example if it's a heat pump and the heat pump it does the heating and the ac then uh you don't need the additional ac coverage you just that's because it's considered one unit so it's um if that unit is covered just by under the basic plan you don't need the additional air conditioning coverage on that but check with other home warranty companies i'm not um, they might have different coverage than that um so that we talked about the, the dollar limitations to be aware of those um because they do vary on that um 
Um, something also just to look on, home, know the difference with home warranty companies is um, some contracts may have the obsolete part clause, which will eliminate coverage if the failed component part is no longer available. We do have some older homes, and um, if they go out there and it's it, and it's failed, will they be like, we can't even try and repair it because the, the parts no longer uh, are available and it's obsolete, so then they will not cover. It'll be considered a non-covered item. Um, not all home warranty companies are that way. Some will cover down there. I know we do for obsolete parts. So just know those are some like some details that are you know when they come into play, they're important. Um, and then let's see, working with a home warranty company that has established a proven track record often has its benefits. Check with the National Home Service Contractor Association to see if your company is a member. And I, you know, just like anything, like the real estate companies, I mean, they, you know, I been in the business for a while and some home warranties come and shut down they didn't you know financially it's um has just so just to know that um if you're in question if you see new companies pop up just make sure that they're um you know i there was i think it was freedom um home warranty was it like 2020 they had been around for a while and and there and then they just shut down and I know we, you know, people were stuck with the contracts and what they were not followed through with. So um, each contract is company's contract is different. Um, other than a very broad sense, there is no standardization of coverage or exclusion uh, exclusions. The best advice is to stay abreast of the sell of uh, the coverage available and enlist your clients' active participation in selecting the coverage that best suits their needs and budget uh, for the home of selling or buying. And um, so this is best practice, practices is you know, highly recommended that sellers and buyers read the contract. Please refer any questions to your local um, home warranty representative like that. And I, you know, uh, like I said, I uh, as a rep, I know, you know, you guys put it in the contract. Don't, you know, don't put it in the contract. Give it as a gift. How, however you guys do that. But you, you know the overall of it, but obviously you're not the sales rep for home warranties and you don't have all the answers and nor should you. So I'm like, you should be working with whoever you're working with should be able to uh, refer them to um, a rep for that company and they should be able to help your client at all times with that. And where are we on time? Are we a little bit longer here? Let's see. We're good on time. Questions? So far. I have a couple questions for you. Can you um, address permits if something's not permitted or how you would cover something like that if we find out down the road? And then the other question, can you cover seller co coverage? Yes, definitely, definitely. Um, okay, so if it's not, like, so it's it's already installed in there and it's not permitted and it wasn't caught before the sell and then uh, we go out there. So we have an option where um, to bring it up to code or um, to pull the permits when we're replacing something, depending on different counties have different rules with that. Um, we have an option that you can, uh, that will put dollar amounts towards that. Um, but if it's, not permitted it would be you know like and so i believe that would fall under um not properly installed or um malfunction so that i would have to be like a case by case at least with us it would have to be a case by case so i i don't know i honestly have not had that situation myself that i've got a call on that said they went in there and it wasn't permitted um I believe it, they just have to bring it up to code because it have to be permitted is what it'd have to be. And again, if they have a certain option on there that would put dollar amount towards it, it wouldn't probably cover the whole thing, but it would be a person dollar. Is that helpful? And then um, seller's coverage. So, okay, well, since you asked that, we'll go over that. So seller's coverage is it, it most home warranty does have some form of seller's coverage. Um, so I, I, I will speak on what I know of as an example for us. Um, seller's coverage is some companies, it can be, you can have seller's coverage, but it's a guaranteed, you, it's, you need to pay a certain amount of dollars. There's a, there's a price for that. And then the seller has coverage during the listing period. Ours, for example, we call it a complimentary 
um, seller's coverage, limited seller's coverage. There is no cost up front for it. Um, I, the way I sell it with the, um, uh, with realtors that I work with is, um, put it on as soon as you get the listing and your seller is covered from the day that it gets placed. And then, um, it, it falls under the basic plan, but it's limited, so it's not the full buyer's basic plan. There's a seller's basic plan. There's some options that can be added on with that. Um, and for an example for us, why it's limited is because there's no cost up front for it, and there's no cost at the very end. The, the idea for, because uh, there used to not be any seller's coverage. Uh, I know with us as an example, uh, it was set up to, be that the seller would say, I'm going to buy the buyer a uh, home warranty. Whoever buys this house, I'm good as the seller is going to purchase a home warranty for the buyer. So as a complimentary benefit to the seller, First American had said, we're going to go ahead and give the seller a benefit of that and give them some coverage during the listing period should anything fail on there. And then this, you know, then when it closes, the buyer would they would pay for the one contract for the buyer for their 12 months, and then it would be, they'd be covered. Um, but I know with the agents that I work with, that I, I, it's a negotiating tool a lot of times in your guys' transactions. And it also varies so much on, um, you know, where the market's at. I mean, you know, you guys are trying to get clean offers in and get accepted. You're not really asking for a lot of other things and, and giving away other things. So, um, so it's a negotiating tool. So, um, sometimes it's, it's with us, it's not mandatory that it gets purchased. Obviously, I think the majority of them all get purchased. I have some that cancel, but, um, but it's not mandatory. So as a realtor, you guys, you know, you guys are putting it on, you believe in the home warranties. Um, I don't have any, anybody I work with that I have feel ever abuses it. Um, and so then the, the, the seller can have the coverage during the listing period. I say if I was a realtor and I had the benefit of that, I would put it on every single one of my listings to cover my seller. There's no expense. They get some coverage just to the water heater, you know, be leaking, you know, start leaking during the listing period. That can be a covered item. There are a little, there is with us, there are some limits, um, because again, it's on the paid contract, but there's really still a really good coverage on that. So just know what specifically with whoever you use, what their seller's coverage looks. Some people, some I, um, home workers I know, they offer the seller's coverage, but it is an additional charge, regardless whether the buyer gets a plan or not. And then um, some cannot. So just just know on that. Is that did that answer your question? With as far yeah, as yeah, I just have another question though. So the add-on would be the AC and furnace, and that's an additional cost. Whether they um, they have to pay for that at the end, right? And then yeah. the other question is, if the seller does use it and say they don't have the furnace, or do they end up having to purchase the warranty if they end up using it during the listing period? If they okay, say that last part again. If the seller uses the warranty during the listing time before it's purchased, um, do they end up having to pay for the warranty? And how much is that basic seller's warranty at, at that no. time? No, not with First American. With First American, if they use it and then no one purchases it for the buyer, then it's our lot. And right now, again, it's, you know, that could change down the road, but for right now, and since I've been with him, I've been with First American for going on four years now. Um, no, I've never, they, we've had that same, the same, um, um, it's the same rules right now that if, even if it's used, it's, it's no charge at the end. So they still have a deductible though, that they pay for whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so there's, so, so on home warranties, every home warranty company has what we call a service fee and a service fee um it's they're pretty much all about in the same ballpark some vary a little bit ours is is 85 dollars per claim when you're when you place a claim there's no limit with first american there's no limit how many claims you can place through the your 12 months of your home warranty um but yeah there's a there, that's so no deductible confirm with all any other home warranty company i don't know most of them like they're just service fees, but sometimes there's a limit on how many claims you can place 
that does vary, but everybody's got like a service fee. Sometimes it's between seventy-five and eighty-five dollars is generally what all of them are across the board. And then, what was the cost for the add-on for the? I guess it's the heating system is an additional $1. cost. Yeah, yeah. So for for a first American, it's seventy dollars to add on that option to add on for um, the sellers to have their coverage during uh, the listing period. Now that and there's a kind of a good example of it used to be like a apples for apples. So the basic coverage, and this is before I started, but I was educated on this, that used to be if you placed um, the home warranty that was going to be purchased for the buyer, the basic, the seller got the exact same basic. However, the HVAC is the most expensive, right? And people were abusing that. <laughs> they were using it, getting repairs, and then no buyer's plan was getting purchased. So so and you know that's the bigger cost obviously so they just now they just added it on basically separated where you have to add it on seventy dollars still is a small amount of cost for if it needs to be you know repaired um but it's just to make the seller i.e and, and realtor think twice before putting it on that that it is something that gets added on that the thing that's the most confusing with with our sellers coverage since we're talking about it i'll explain is that what you're talking about tina is that you add on the sellers uh, hvac for that 70 dollars if no plan is purchased at the end for the buyer there's just no plan at all that's bought then we just cancel the the you know at the end we say okay it's just it's canceled no one's purchasing it's done uh, when it closes if the seller had put on this for the seller's coverage during the listing period, the HVAC, and then the buyer plan is placed, you know, or purchased at the end, the, and let's just say it's just the basic plan. So the basic plan's only purchased once for that amount, but that additional $70 is also due at close of escrow for the seller to have that coverage. I can't remove that. Um, have that removed. So, but if the whole thing gets canceled, then yeah, the whole thing gets canceled. So I know it seems kind of confusing, but that's just how that's the rules I'm working with right now. <laughs> so does that help? Yep, that's great. I one last question. Sorry to be a pain. No, no, no. Um, no. Um, does your company offer the annual maintenance on the furnace or the water heater? I know some companies do at no cost. Is okay. that something that is offered to the buyer or yeah. seller? It's not to, not to the seller. That's not an option for the seller with first marketing. It's an option that can be purchased for twenty five dollars for the um, for the buyer. Yes, that's been that's something that has been added on with First American, and I think that is something that's an option for the most home warranty companies. But it's added on. Yes, there's a we have a, a it's called HVAC tune up option, and they'll go out twice for the year, one for the heating system, one for the AC during the springtime. There's t there's a time frame that you can do that, but yes, there's for the servicing on that. Okay, and so that's an option for you guys. Option, correct. Okay, yeah. great. Thank you. You're welcome. And then another thing that's also uh, that's been added on since I've been working with First American, that's I think it's also was some home warranties had it, but I think it's pretty standard across most home warranties anymore too, is that um, rekey. So something that's that's um, um, can be, is that, that's on home warranty, that's really not systems, but it's a rekey um, that went for the new homeowners to get in there and you have that be part of the warranty. Um, and then, so, and then the, you know, I'll kind of probably finish up on this, unless anybody else has any other questions, but uh, just, you know, this we pretty much talked about the claims and kind of the process of the claims. So just know um, what's the best way that when you know, all claims have to be placed with the home warranty before a uh, technician, you know, goes out there. But just know is it a you know most most of them have. Um, phone numbers to call in, have online portals that you can go on. I know for us as an example, we have both and you can call 24 seven on the phone number. I always say the easiest and quickest way that you don't have to get option one, option two, all of those is to have the homeowner have their um, an online portal set up through our website and then they can place claims that way. Um, and then also they can, it can kind of will show the status on there. It's just a nice way to manage um, the home warranty and um, the claims process. So, um, 
so yeah, that's and then just know, like I said, when with the claims is what this is what this class is kind of on is on the claims process. Um, just know whatever home warranty company that you do use is it do they have their own technician that goes out there? Do they do they get their own technician? Um, and then, but most everything has to be, you know, even if they have their own technician, they're going to have to get it authorized and they're going to have to agree on what's going to be covered or not covered um, with the technician and the home warranty company at the time. And speaking of technicians, like I said, you know, I, I mean, we all, industry-wide, we really, um, the bigger ones, we share a lot of the same technicians because it's just the trade, I mean, the trade's growing, but, you know, we're kind of in the midst of it all right now, and um, so if you guys ever know of local people and, you know, are good businesses, I send them my way. I put anybody, I suggest people send them over to my contractor's manager and they're always hiring me. Like I said, they call and see if they're going to be a good fit and they, um, you know, we're hiring new contractors all the time. So um, just keep that in mind. We don't like, we're open to hiring new ones all the time. So um, any other questions on this? And then I kind of just wanted to go over while well, I have you guys here. Let me get out of this screen. And then I just have a really quick, quick question, Kim. Yeah. Uh, Kim. When you were yeah. talking with Tina about how the add-on for the seller for the HVAC mm -hmm. has to be paid at closing, do you normally see escrow dividing that payment? Say a, a, a payment was a warranty was put in place for the buyer, uh, and the buyer had said they'd pay for that. So do you normally split that or how's that handled? Well, it, two ways. Um, sometimes I have realtors that if they're, they're the, mostly a listing realtor and they're like, I, I just, that's the one thing I'm paying. You know, they've negotiated someone else's buying, buying the plan. They'll just pay that. The other thing I have other agents that will say in the contract in there, what they'll say is that we're, we're going to pay up to $500 for the home warranty. Okay, so when they say that, I give them whatever the, the closest to that amount is for the home warranty. And basically, if the buyer then wants, let's just say that that doesn't give them, um, ours is the Eagle Premier, right? So let's say, um, but the $500 isn't going to pay for the Eagle Premier. So I'll give them the middle of the road one, add it up closest to the 500 and then the buyer generally will pay that difference if they okay. want the plan so that so it just depends on the wording on that and then um and then we don't care you know how we get paid and who pays it could be divided up five ways you know but it's just the tell um best for the agents to instruct the escrow officer so they yeah. know that at the time they'll put it in there and collect the money from whomever's divided up that way great thank you you're welcome um let me let me get out of this window if I can, and I want to share this. So, I, you know, speaking of claims, so we're done with the class now, and I just wanted to say, and you know, um, and I do appreciate your questions, Tina, because you know I do work with you a lot, and um, you know, and when I'm talking to the the realtors, like I said, if I'm talking to you realtors about the uh, claim, and you are talking to me about a claim, it's because there's a hiccup with it where is some issues with it, right? Whether it's came off track for delayed, whether it's being denied for whatever reason, that's when you guys are involved in a claim, that's when I'm involved in a claim. But there are so many that get paid and um, we don't even hear about, which is the whole purpose of having the home warranty, right? So I just like to point it out because I feel like, you know, again, we get stuck in the problems and the issues and so like, oh, they, you know, we always have this problem, but that's not the case. So these are just some numbers that was just pulled from this, it was from the beginning of last year to the very end, so all of 2021, that this is just for your guys' uh, office, that we spent $10,000, $218 on claims that were paid claims um, just in the 12 months. And then of all the contracts that were ordered, you know, paid for, and of the claims, 28% of the clients from the past 12 months made a claim. And those are another, I like to share that, the good numbers on that is because generally it is uh, two thirds of people 
in that first year will place a claim. Those are our numbers that come across from our contracts nationwide, that 28% people, or I'm sorry, three fourths, uh, two thirds of people will place a claim that first year. And then, um, and most of them will place it in the first three months. And that generally, just like it happens, it's a rhythm of a house, right? That's how I, my best way of describing that is that, you, again, you have, you know, a family of two or three that lives in a home that the house just works and functions that way. And then you get, you know, a whole nother rhythm of, you know, five people in there that everything is used a lot more or just different, different ways. And it's all of a sudden the water heater does break down, the heating, whatever, you know, so that's just, you know, and I know you guys are aware of that because you guys deal with that, but those are some numbers. And then, so 12 claims were placed out of your office in the last 12 months, which is averaging of the $851 per claim. And then I just show, I was able to see that the two highest pay, pay, or paid claims in the office, one was uh, $2,846 and the other one was $1,750. So those are just some, I just, you know, I think Lene appreciated, I sent that over just to see, I, if you guys I, um, want to know your own particular uh, one that you just want to have some knowledge on that, or, um, you know, let me know, I can pull the numbers just for you individually as well on that. But um, yeah, there, there's that. And then I just, when I was speaking of, Again, in a perfect world, every claim would be, you would never ever hear about a claim. I wouldn't hear about a claim. <laughs> Everything would run real smooth. But, um, you know, like I said, we kind of, this last year has been my most challenging year as just all of us it has been. And um, to give you an example of what, just just a little behind the scenes of what, what has happened and where the future holds for us is, um, I just got this from our contracts manager just on Monday. But in comparison from year 2020 um, to 2021, we ended up, because people are working from home now, obviously, and everything's getting used a lot more. So our claims volume has really went up. So just within a year, and this is for the state of Oregon, we were, uh, we had, uh, had paid the $3,000, we paid $3,000 more in the claims um, in the 12 months and um, $5.4 million total for all of Oregon was paid out in claims. So a lot, so when we, so we hear the ones that are, have been denied or difficult, um, but there's so many that are getting paid. So it is, it does work and it really is a budget saver for your, for the clients and the homeowners. Um, and then, um, uh, yeah, so there's, I, I'm sorry, there, yeah, there was, there was 3,000 more claims. We had 3,000 3, more claims from 20 to 21, not dollars, 3,000 3, more claims that were, um, that were paid. And so um, anyway, having said that, what I just, um, we weren't ready for the infrastructure. We're with one with the, the technicians and um just in our infrastructure inside with our our contractors with our with you know purchasing department all of those things but what i do know for a fact is that we have hired on all this whole year first american has went on and we've been hiring and hiring we've hired in all the and in all those departments so that to what's been our normal time frames that was not our normal time frames this last year i'm very hopeful in this coming 2022 that our time frames are going to be back down to what our normal time frames are our technicians are going to be able to service within in in all of that there's not going to be what's still out of our control is parts you know as far as you know manufacturing but that again i'm seeing improvement in that than i was like this summer um and so just you know just wanted to share that information for you that just is helpful the kind of that you guys know and you know like i said i'm i'm being honest it's my most challenging year with that but i really do uh, i instead of like you know laying people off and firing we definitely i we've been hiring and we've been hiring and training and, and coming up to what our new reality is and meeting the needs. So we're able to meet the needs of what's, you know, for the home warranty. So anyway, thank you so much for having me and letting me um, come on here and teach this class and just be able to um, educate you guys some more on home warranties. Um, I'm gonna give you my email address 
and I can I put in chat too here. Let's see, I'll put it in here. And then if you just email me your name and uh, your DRE number, and then I will get the um, the certificate back to you for the our CE class. And my email is K I Peterson. So it's K I P E T E R S O N at firstam.com. So there we go. Just email me with your name and that, and then I will get your um, certificates over to you. Oops, there we go. All right. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. So yes, uh, anybody have any further questions of Kim? Uh, and again, be sure to send her your contact information and your license number so that she can issue your certificate because uh, she's the one who's hosting um, this. So she doesn't have all that stuff on file for you. And, and for a couple of people here, I don't know who caller one is or who caller six is. Um, so whoever you are, make sure you, you also communicate with Kim. Uh, any further questions of anybody? Any haves or wants or anything else you want to talk about before we, we leave for the day? I don't see anything I, in the chat. I just have a want. I'm still looking okay. for something west side under 900,000, um, minimum two bedroom, two bath, thousand square feet, would prefer um, uh, it has a garage, but not necessary. Single family. Um, they need to find something before mid-March in order to close in April. Uh, so if anybody's got anything coming up on the west side, please let me know. Thank you. Hi, yeah, great. Hi, Thanks, I, have a, I have a coming soon. Uh, it'll probably be ready in a week or less. It's um, investment property, two duplexes side by side in Redmond. They'll be sold separately to equal about 850,000. They're single level fenced backyard close to the hospital and services and it has renters in place and it yields really high rent so if anybody has investors give me a call at 548-3598 thank you bye thanks diane anyone else how's your wants okay if not Thank you very, very much, Kim, for your time and um, look forward to talking with you more. I will also, when I get the recording of the do of the, of the uh, class, I will send that out to everybody along with your contact information as well, Kim, so that uh, everyone will have it a second time. Thank you and, so much. Yeah, thank you. All right, everybody, thanks so much and have a great day. Hey, right, thanks, Kim.